So, yeah. Hi, everyone. We are, uh, Peter and I, we tell you a little bit about the practical problems uh, you're actually facing if you're uh, trying to uh, make a solo punk future uh, really to real life. And uh, we have a small side project. Usually we're working on a, on a crypto wallet called Minerva. Um, and we have Seven Energy, which is doing basically accounting uh, for real life energy communities. And we think about how to um, make energy communities a really important part of uh, getting a solar punk future, which we all desire so much. Um, but before I get into how we, what we're working on, I want to say a couple of words. What is an energy community? Uh, because uh, you need to know how the energy space is actually uh, regulated. So it's very kind of densely regulated. You can't do much. You can't sell to your neighbor. You can't sell energy to somebody uh, you want to. And we are now getting a more decentralized kind of system so we're having more and more self-production on houses and so on. But usually in summer, you have so much production from your house, which you can't kind of use yourself and which you need to get to somebody else. But uh, right now, the whole system is completely centralized. Now it's kind of reshaping and that's kind of causing friction, of course, with the incumbents which are out there. Uh, the incumbents have no intention to give away to us trading energy directly. So I have to say that I'm kind of really happy that actually the uh, European Union uh, made a framework where every European country needs to implement something which is called an energy community. So there are two ways of energy communities, a renewable energy community and a citizen energy community. And... Uh, they actually structured it in a way that uh, big corporations can't easily take over those energy communities. Those energy communities are meant to be a kind of a association or a cooperative uh, of kind of uh, people which are close to each other. And big corporations can't kind of take over because the kind of governance needs to stay within that community. So that's already kind of in the expected how the nations actually implement that kind of regulation from the European level. So uh, different countries are in different kind of, um, how can I say, uh, implementation stages. Austria is quite far ahead, although every European nation should actually have already the regulation in place uh, to allow energy communities. Um, I think there are like three or four done it. So they should have had it last year. Uh, so if you're from one European Union country, so you should press your government if you don't have that regulation yet in place. But that's also a reason why we think that uh, it's a good place to kind of prototype some kind of system in Austria where we already have the regulation for it. Um, so you probably know that, uh, that we all strive for uh, climate neutrality uh, by 2015 European Union, but uh, Austria is also a little bit more ambitious, wants to have electricity 2030 completely from renewables and 2040 completely energy um, uh, carbon neutrality. Um, coming back to the headline, so saying uh, we are looking for a solar punk future, so what's solar punk future? And you, what you often see is these kind of pictures uh, out there. And uh, I would like to, uh, to go back to yesterday's talks or recommend you to go back to yesterday's talks. There was uh, Martin talking about sustainable architecture. And uh, that was really kind of a very good framework, what he presented and uh, what actually is needed for uh, urbanized uh, kind of system, how we get there to have more greenery in the, in the cities, what we have, to have a more livable place, to have everything around us that we don't have to commute so much and so on. Of course, we see some implementations which go in the direction of maybe uh, that. So this is Singapore. This is more like a recreational space. So I would not say, okay, we all live there and it all li looks like <laughs> this in the future. But uh, I kind of like that kind of direction it's taking. So. 
there is more awareness to build things which are appealing and nice to look at, so, uh, and, and nice to walk through. Um, why is energy important? I think uh, this is the fundamental kind of misconception. We are very often discussing about should we do this and should we do that. Uh, we should be clear that everything around us, everything what we do right now is based on fossil fuels. So we just kind of recently started harvesting energy from sun, from wind, and a couple of other sources. So uh, this is still reflected in the amount what we consume in fossil fuels. So if you look at this one, this is the current uh, primary energy consumption. Uh, you just see the kind of magnitude, what we need to change, how we need to get to a point where all these kind of small pieces there on, on that chart, on the pie chart, is actually growing tremendously. And we see only major growth in wind and solar, actually. So nuclear is more or less still sending. And yeah, and, uh, and water is kind of, kind of used quite extensively already in many parts. Uh, so wind and solar is the one which actually has to, uh, to win. And the other thing is, of course, reduce energy consumption. Um, in various places. So transport is one, houses, housing is another one, where you have a lot of fuel, uh, fossil fuel consumption. So when we uh, talk about energy communities and when we say, okay, what kind of problem in real life? So intersection with people, and you should imagine if you're talking to energy community, you're having mostly older people, non-crypto people. They have no in interest in speculation. You can't catch them with NFTs. There is just no way to get them interested in all that kind of stuff. So, but of course, um, the regulation itself, as well as uh, the government, they, uh, they want to incentivize these energy communities. And the energy communities, they should have some kind of financial benefit out of it. Uh, if you look at the Austrian situation, in Austria actually you have, um, you have about 50 to 100 euros what the household can save being part of an energy community. If you have a small energy community, let's say you're starting, you're kind of, uh, kind of uh, finding a couple of people around you and you're starting and you're building an association, very easily uh, the banking fees actually cost you more than basically what you can save. Um, and that kind of brought us to this kind of idea, okay, why not just solve this very tiny problem of doing accounting on the blockchain using a blockchain token, using a stable coin uh, in that kind of system and move all the other bits and pieces outside. So we are Having that kind of regulatory uh, need that we have to do an official organization within the country, so we have an association, so people need to come to something which is kind of an official organization. And uh, then we built another thing which we call Seven Energy DAO, which is basically you're kind of opting in into this DAO where you get shares and where you also contribute something, but Peter will tell you more about that one. And of course, the members, they need uh, a wallet, and they need to join this association. Um, and then there is this other kind of thing, somewhere you need to get the data for the accounting, and then you do the accounting, and that basically is doing uh, direct, directly um, deductions from wallets uh, in that seven energy DAO. So, um, because you see more of that uh, in, in a bit, uh, this is the current, uh, current website. So, everything is in German, because as I said, so we're we are doing this kind of prototype in Austria. Uh, so, energy communities without banks, and it's meant to be uh, so-called uh, citizen energy communities. So, citizen energy community doesn't have kind of any kind of constraint how close participants in that energy community are. 
Uh, so we have a little bit more flexibility that we can select people further apart taking part in that energy community. Uh, we did this uh, proof of concept for the DAO, uh, what you uh, see at least on, on the surface in a bit. And of course, you can check out the, the GitHub as well. Uh, and uh, we are preparing the association uh, for it and, and prepare it. So now Peter will tell you a little bit more about uh, the, the DAO itself. Okay, um, so I'm going to walk you through our DAO that we built. Uh, so this is the, the interface when you load it up. So users that we want to onboard, they, they didn't, don't know about wallets, um, but you know, of course, so there's MetaMask um, or injected wallets, and there's also Wallet Connect, which is really important to us uh, so that it also works with our, our wallet. Um, that's a mobile wallet. And yeah, let's uh, look at the onboarding flow. So you can see on top, uh, there's a wallet connected there, and there's four steps. Um, first step is to uh, become a member of the DAO. So that's the on-chain workflow. Um, more about that uh, right now. But um, step two is to, to become part of this association that we need. It's a legal requirement. Um, so this is um, like off-chain, uh, signing some documents and becoming part of that association. And uh, point three is to actually activate uh, this data flow. So we need some data from the household, uh, like how much en energy was consumed or how much energy was provided to the, to the um, energy community. So we also need to activate that. And step four is to, to then profit from, from this um, DAO. Um, going back to step one, um, so users uh, are, are like, um, if you uh, have energy um, utility bills, you're used to like bank accounts where, where funds are uh, collected from the bank account. And we want to do something similar here. So the user has to have some token. Um, we're on Kovan here, so it's uh, some fake die that we use here. And you need to have some of those and you need to uh, set an allowance so funds can be pulled from your account. And there's, there also needs to be um, some, some like entry fee that you need to provide when you join as a kind of safety. So um, if you run out of funds in your wallet, um, it takes some time to maybe stop you, uh, so stop um, the, the accounting uh, in the real world. So um, we have this entrance fee as a kind of safety that we can uh, work with uh, when you have an empty wallet suddenly. So if you join this DAO, you see this screen here. So this is your membership. And you can see um, your balance in your account. So, so in this case, uh, 900 FDI, and next to it, you can see your allowance. So the allowance that you set, we can uh, retract from, from your wallet. And uh, for the fee that you pay when you enter the DAO, you get some shares in the DAO. Um, so it says here you have uh, 100 shares, and on top you can see, so it's two members uh, in this DAO, so you have like 50% of the shares. And you can, of course, uh, change your allowance uh, uh, with this field here. And the next section is um, the list of members. Uh, so in this one, uh, I already said it, it's two members in the DAO. Um, members can um, like net consume energy or more consume than provide. And there can also be members that provide more energy. So they have like solar panels on their roof and they will provide, and we will do the, the accounting. So um, we measure um, what's happening, and then we, we shift balances. So we say, OK, we retract some, some FDI, and we distribute it again among the members. And you can also uh, decide to like stock up on, on shares and also uh, lower your, your shares um, to a certain minimum. And the last option is, of course, to, to leave the DAO um, if you decide uh, that you don't want to be a member anymore. Okay. So, um, 
everything basically is based on a wallet. So uh, we're uh, we have been working a couple of years now on the Minerva wallets, and uh, although you see here a couple of screens, um, and we think it's a fairly simple to use wallet. Um, what we also kind of think that basically taking the, the, the people which are part of an energy community, they will need a much more simplified beginner's wallet. We think it is mobile, we are currently working on the design for it, but if you don't make it super, super simple, this use case will never fly. And uh, I don't believe in kind of, you know, it's like we can do all these kind of virtual things and we're doing all these kind of trading and, and having NFT drops and we made some air streams with a token and made them streamable. Everything nice, everything great for a certain community. If you're talking about uh, things like energy communities, it has to be super simple, very easy for everybody to understand. And all this kind of complexity, what we're doing, has to be abstracted away. Uh, they need to get in, they need to get out, they need to handle their token, they should not care about gas payments. All these kind of things, they have to be gone. And only then, I think, uh, things like uh, solo punks can change the world, in my opinion. Thank you very much. <laughs> Absolutely love it. Does anyone in the quest in the audience have any questions? Ah, we've got two questions here. Who get ah? There's the microphone is closer. You win. Fairly simple one. Uh, how do you help uh, people on board to get their first X die or uh, like turn? How how do they come in first when they don't have any crypto or anything? Do, do, do you help them or? Yeah, especially now in this kind of very early stage of it, uh, we, we help them. Uh, we also don't have this kind of super simple wallet, but of course designing the super simple wallet already takes into consideration what would people need for real life use cases. In, in our case, we think that the wallet should kind of, uh, this kind of simple wallet should basically lead you right in the, in the very first purchase of some euro stabilized token so that you are not thinking about any kind of other token. The first thing you get is, a, in our case, we think of J Euro. Uh, so Jarvis is having a Euro-based token. So I think there uh, it would be the first step and then basically helping on. But, uh, but right now we probably have to help everyone uh, onboarding except they're already part of crypto. <laughs> Okay, and I'm afraid we're up for time, so no more questions for that, but thank you very much for coming and talking to us, Peter and Thomas.